any kind of questions they want to ask about commandos so maybe if they aap ko laya na yaar genuine bande se baat karayenge na inko so then they know the what is that real stuff right uh, usse pehle andy se baat karaya tha ek baar acha okay andy echo wala na ha 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 okay yes sir good evening to one and all uh, today we are grateful to have with us colonel mandeep man paragement special forces He had been posted in operational areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Sri Lanka, Punjab, North East. Uh, he then completed his executive management program uh, from IIM Bangalore. Then moved on to the world of uh, startups, defense technology, building solutions, technological solutions for intelligence. Uh, then he spent around ten years in Barclays. So this is military corporate uh, both experiences that he has. Now uh, he has he is also had been a marathon runner. an adventurer uh, plus he had he has completed uh, the gobi desert ultra marathon run uh, right now he is uh, joining us straight from pangang so uh, uh, pangang to lake uh, and a straight life from there uh, we welcome you sir we wish to uh, learn from your experiences and as you has pointed out that real life of commandos is altogether different so we want to know more about that mm, now i give it to nehru sir yeah before that uh, i think thanks yogita for uh, the brief introduction and uh, uh, as i said that i'm not in right now at pangongso because pangongso doesn't have the connectivity so we are somewhere between uh, leh and uh, pangongso some somewhere in the military station where we have good connectivity can you hear me yeah yeah you are audible you are audible okay okay just wanted to clarify on that uh, as well yeah 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 go ahead uh, neru Fine. तो यार पहला सवाल तो यह है ये बताओ तुम्हारा एनडीए ज्वाइन करने का मोटिवेशन क्या था फ्रेंकली स्पीकिंग आई वॉज यू नो वी हैव अ मिलिट्री बैकग्राउंड इन द फैमिली लाइक माई अंकल्स वर इन दर्मी एंड सम वर इन दर फोर्स सम वर इन दर्मी एंड उनको देख के आई गॉट मोटिवेटेड टू ज्वाइन दर्मी एंड एज अ नेचुरल फॉल आउट ऑफ because my brother was very keen to join the air force so he uh, volunteered and you know he got all the forms and everything and uh, so dekha dekhi me i also kind of got motivated and all that he could not join the air force uh, unfortunately because after doing his uh, selection and everything he had some medical issues so because okay. of which and he was only very keen to join the air force and uh, so that uh, was i think the start point and then in our school also you know we had a lot of uh, you know in those days uh, uh, i don't know how how much uh, the army career is popular in the schools but in our school i was uh, in delhi in kendriya vidyalaya and lot of people were uh, uh, you know volunteers for joining the army and uh, you know they had matlab uh, uh, it was like uh, something which you always aspire for uh, so after 10th i also filled up that form and thing like that and uh, then i uh, kind of uh, you know took some help from uh, some of my seniors who had already got through then my uh, Uh, i would say family members and i asked them what it is all about and all that so that's how i kind of got motivated and uh, filled up that form and i think nda was supposed to be considered one of the most uh, premier institute to join the army so that was my uh, i would say uh, motivation ssb ki taiyari taiyari kya ki thi kuch aapne ya waise chale gaye so ssb ke liye uh, see uh, Uh, I had uh, been preparing for it because Delhi, me, you get a lot of opportunities in, in uh, terms of the information, and uh, I had picked up that uh, same NDA 
you know the question and answers wala uh, ssb book and i used to study that uh, that is one and then i had joined uh, uh, an academy in pusa road and that also i uh, you know kind of attended it during the evening time after my uh, school and uh, then once i got through my uh, academic that written exam then i uh, did a uh, full time kind of a, you know training uh, for 15 days for ssb orientation as well as for the group testing uh, so that was quite useful in terms of giving me at least uh, you know very focused way of what i need to be you know uh, uh, seeing when i go for my ssb and thing like that so that was there and uh, obviously while we were studying at school so a lot of other people uh, were there so we used to discuss things and uh, you know chat around i think that was also a kind of uh, uh, peer understanding and those who had already got selected that information also was getting uh, you know filtered ke kya karna chahiye but i i i uh, i wouldn't say that uh, i was uh, I mean it was my first attempt when i got through nda and i didn't face any challenge both from academic perspective or from physical uh, you know those tests uh, perspective though i did uh, attend those uh, classes uh, at uh, pusa institute or pusa road yeah i don't remember you like the name of that institute yeah any of your classmates also joined so we had one uh, group captain who joined uh, one course in your 60th course uh, uh, desh pande i think lima scotton and uh, then there were couple of more people who joined after me but they didn't join nda but they they joined uh, after doing their uh, colleges so three of the them joined later one joined in artillery uh, one joined another in infantry one joined in eme so there of total of i think five six of us who were all in the same class uh, but then uh, there were a couple of people i met later on i came to know that they had also joined the army after joining the army i realized that they are from my same school so there were quite a few i would say uh, at least uh, seven eight of us who had joined the army yeah. so deshpande sir to ek india squad mein the 60th ke ha ah, sandeep deshpande yeah But the Sandeep or some something like that, yeah. It must be your squad, yeah. You were in India, right? Ah ha, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Even my squad died. Ah, he, uh, he left and he joined Air India and all, right? Okay, no, I didn't keep track there after. I knew him as a nice, nice, sweet guy. Yeah, yeah, he was quite a nice guy. I think his father was also in the Air Force, so I had met him, uh, been to his house and all. So we interacted quite a bit, yeah. But once he joined NDA. uh and then after that of course while in india you know how life is all about you hardly get any time to really meet and uh, interact unless you are in the same squad and yeah so kya tha yaar highlights of your uh, nda you know exposure uh, starting from gorpuri nda wing to the, the complete three years so uh, for me it was quite a change because uh, uh, matlab my father was not in the army but my uncles and others were so it was a absolutely uh, quite a change from uh, what i had been doing so jata hi wo ragda patti shuru ho jata hai and uh, you know you, you when you land up over there uh, all the uh, the dss are after your blood because you are not in the main wing and uh, so that was quite a uh, change uh, from life but then sooner sooner you realize uh, what life is all about and physically i was pretty okay so mere ko physically koi aisa major challenge nahi aaya academically i was also uh, reasonably okay in terms of uh, not failing in any of the subjects but the life uh, in nda was very very organized i think that is one uh, very disciplined and very organized life uh, which i saw and uh, you could do lot of things uh, while in ghorpuri and then when you go to the main academy and you could pursue uh, you know lot of uh, uh, hobbies over there like riding and uh, you took tennis uh, then swimming and i also joined the athletics team i didn't know that i was an uh, you know i i could uh, do so well in athletics but uh, i i don't know whether you know there was this uh, course mate kipgen yeah yeah kipgen yeah manipuri is a senior school infal wala high jumper yeah yeah so he said that you have the talent uh, for you know these uh, middle distance runs 400 800 uh, and long jump and all that so kind of he motivated me so i give full credit to him that he saw that uh, i have uh, the potential for that and uh, i uh, joined the athletics team and uh, uh, after that obviously i won a lot of medals uh, while in nda and riding was uh, quite a uh, like we used to do, go for riding it was fun and uh, obviously it was more glamorous so we did riding me rambir and a couple of others uh, uh, you know who used to go for uh, riding classes and all that so it was good fun we enjoyed that tent pegging and end of the term 
uh, we have those events uh, wherein uh, uh, you have show jumping, etc. So you used to do that. So all these, uh, I would say, hobbies which we could pursue in NDA and uh, you know enjoy them. I don't think that uh, in uh, real life it could be very easy for a common man to kind of afford it. Though, yeah, these are, these things are available, but they are uh, very expensive, and uh, uh, you cannot get that kind of time which was available there in NDA. And besides that, also I think. Uh, uh, while you are in the squadron, so each squadron has their own, uh, I would say, ethos. So uh, we learned a lot uh, in that in terms of how to respect your seniors and uh, you know get the things done. So kafi matlab but then I think that's also that also helps you to uh, make a strong character and uh, uh, you know uh, have the courage of conviction when things go wrong and uh, take all the bullshit uh, which you have to take because the kind of bullshit you take in India, I don't think that you ever take in your life anywhere else. And after having taken that bullshit, you feel that you can take anything like rolling down from the staircases or those you know, bathroom sessions and uh, you know, throughout the night, you are uh, just on the seventh heaven and things like that. So there are a lot of stuff which is uh, uh, quite extraordinary uh, in a way. Uh, but when you look at it uh, now, you realize uh, that did you go through all that? Yeah, we did go through all that. And I think when we went now recently to NDA, so we kind of recapitulated all that what we went through and we re re we relive our lives uh, uh, once again. So I think a lot of ragada, a lot of physical, uh, I would say, uh, endurance, uh, which we go through and a very organized, disciplined life we have and the kind of uh, facilities and the infrastructure which NDA provides, I don't think anywhere in the, uh, uh, in the country and I would say compare it with many in the world. That, that can be provided. In fact, uh, recently when we went over there, so my wife was uh, over or the kind of infrastructure we have over here. He says it's uh, mind-boggling in the sense of, uh, you know, uh, what uh, we were uh, able to uh, utilize, like sailing clubs and uh, dramatics clubs and all those things are uh, marvelous. I don't think that anybody can uh, uh, get that uh, anywhere else. Yeah. For the benefit of the kids who don't understand things like bathroom session and seventh heaven, <laughs> kindly explain that. <laughs> So bathroom session is like, uh, I would say, unorganized physical activity, which is done at random, uh, you know, just to kind of uh, show you that um, you can go through a lot of ragada. So you sometimes are uh, naked and uh, sometimes you're rolling down the staircases and uh, you're made to, uh, you know, drink water. Sometimes you roll in the water. So it's basically to kind of make you... Uh, uh, mentally strong. So I say that uh, physically though you will get strong once you are uh, you know in NDA. Overall the kind of activities which you do physically you will become strong. But your mental strength hai, wo tabhi aati hai jab aap usko, you put him through a lot of uh, uh, uncertainties in life. And I think that also is carried out when you go for your uh, probation in uh, commandos also. Because uh, lack of sleep, lack of food you know, all those things are uh, tested over there. So it's a similar kind of a thing which you do at a very, very smaller scale because you are young, you come out from your, uh, some some people who have just, uh, you know, done 10th and nowadays, of course, it's after 12th. So you're very young and uh, your, uh, uh, your mind is, uh, you can, you know, motivate uh, in whatever direction uh, you want to do. So that kind of ragada which you take at night and with lack of sleep, so you, you realize that you, you have the potential to take all this. Uh, and in case the situation arises, uh, whether while you're in the army or otherwise elsewhere, that you will be able to you know sustain uh, for a prolonged period. So that kind of a thing. So seventh heaven is like uh, uh, in India, you have... Uh, uh, you know, the, the doors have uh, railings and the seventh railing of the door, which is pretty high. So you climb uh, up that. Machine, you wire machine. That. Wire machine. Yeah, wire machine. Yeah, wire machine, which you hang on to that for as long as you can. So they call it as seventh heaven. And um, so thing like that, yeah. So I, I think, I think this... Just to explain, it is a pretty thin wire, so it bites into your fingers, you know. It's very difficult to yeah. hang on to that. So that is mm. what is getting checked. So did you have a vomit or you went through without vomit shopping? Uh, no, vomit is not. In fact, just before uh, even bathroom session, uh, just to give you an example, I was a quartermaster in the train, uh, you know, that NDA special train, uh, which goes from Pune to uh, Lucknow and all those places. So I was a quartermaster and I had the opportunity to kind of... Uh, 
uh, you know, take care of the food uh, and the uh, uh, eats for, uh, you know, the lunch packets and things like that. So in that also, I had to go through similar kind of a bathroom session wherein they made me drink a lot of water. Because I said that, uh, you know, the seniors were there, Randhava was the ACA at that particular time. And uh, uh, so some of the people didn't get their uh, eats and lunch and things like that. So they told me that you go to the last bogey, you will get it. And that was the first exposure in terms of, uh, you know, what happens in that. So they really kind of made me drink water, made me eat a lot of those uh, kasta puris with water. And then they fed me with the, the sabzi and all that and made me sit up. So I didn't know what the sit up means. So you just kept sitting. So they said, no, you have to get up and you have to sit up without touching the seat itself. Yeah. So all that, kind of, you know, harassment uh, or maybe you could say building a character uh, by forcing you to do all those things. Uh, I, I went through that. And bathroom session, uh, of course, uh, you you drink a lot of water. And uh, obviously, when you're doing uh, rolling, uh, so everything comes out and uh, that particular time. But it also gives you, uh, I don't know whether you have noticed that, because now when I run marathon, the core uh, strength of your uh, running is your stomach and your you know core muscles. So if you are doing these rollings quite often, so that really helps in your running. We didn't realize it at that particular time, but uh, when you're running, you, your body, uh, you know, excre uh, uh, you, you, you generate uh, bile when your muscles are uh, being exerted with anaerobic kind of a, a situation. So at that particular time, you do feel very, very nauseated uh, and you get bile. But the kind of session we used to do, uh, I think that strengthened us and uh, probably saw us through uh, later in life, uh, I feel. Uh, but yeah, I did vomit also, or I at least felt pukish quite a, quite a few times. Yeah. Ye mata yar, thoda. It, apna golf squadron, you know, NDA culture, golf squadron culture, squadron spirit, and all that. Please throw some light on these things. So, uh, you know, uh, like in NDA, every squadron has their own unique culture. So our golf squadron was not very good in terms of the uh, academics or athletics and all till we joined in. So we were considered to be one of the best courses, uh, uh, you know, amongst a lot. Uh, probably you may uh, challenge that. But we we did the kind of, you know, took the banner and things like that. So Golf Scotland was famous for, uh, I would say, uh, doing all these kind of uh, tortures and uh, making your life quite miserable and uh, not giving enough time for sleeping. And uh, so it was quite a, uh, I would say, uh, initial stages. We, we felt that we are in a, in a situation, we should have been in a different Scotland. But I think that made us uh, very strong. And uh, uh, besides that, uh, there used to be some bit of manhandling also. I don't know whether your squadron did have, but in our, uh, it used to be quite often, uh, they used to beat you up and uh, things like that. In some instances, I, I literally kind of uh, wanted to uh, retaliate if somebody did try to hit you, uh, but then I controlled myself, uh, things like that. So yeah, there, is, there used to be a lot of uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, but later on, when uh, we became seniors, we we stopped all that manhandling, and we were good in sports, so uh, we also focused towards uh, that. And then we finally uh, became the best squadron, and uh, we got the banner also. And uh, Nagesh, of course, he became ACA and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, so it was it was good time actually. Yeah, but it was uh, not that uh, like some people say that the hunter had the more. Uh, I would say they used to torture more, and they used to be more uh, these bathroom sessions. But I don't know. I have not felt that. And uh, but every squadron has their unique culture in terms of what they used to do. And when you are passing through their, uh, you know, the these squadrons, so they used to make you pick up their bikes and you know do front rolling and things like that. So all that uh, used to go on. Uh, but but so I, I don't think they were... what war spirit and squadron spirit, you know. Yeah. So each squadron has their own war cry, and uh, they used to, you know, the way they used to shout for uh, whenever there used to be any sports activity and things like that. So all that used to happen, and uh, obviously we used to have that, you know, that golf squadron, uh, chiki laka, chiki laka, voila, uh, this thing. I don't remember the whole thing. Yeah. Now, but yeah, I think that used to be our war cry. Yeah. Fifty eighth course ke time mein aapko banner mila na? Pehli baar in history golf squadron had never got banner before that. Right? Yeah, yeah. 58th course was that, uh, uh, I think, uh, Bedi was our uh, CSM. And uh, I don't remember uh, who were the other guys. But 58th course, we were uh, at that time second term. Yeah. Bedi, Bedi, CSM Yeah, he was the CSM, yeah. Bedi, Yeah, yeah. I relieved him as the instructor in India. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So you were posted in NDA in the same squad, or were you posted elsewhere? Hey, yeah, I got posted initially to Godpuri NDA wing. I was in Mike squadron, and thereafter I got got posted to Foxtrot squadron. Okay. Now, I said to my engine, oh, but I did my tenure with Foxtrot. Okay. Uh, athletics, man, you were doing 400, 800, na? Yeah, 400 meters was my main event and uh, hurdles uh, was my additional uh, event and then relays. Both for Achha, 800. 800, no, 800 yeah, because uh, there were others who were doing, uh, Baljeet and others were doing uh, that. So oh. I think you could only participate in um, maximum three events. And, uh, understood, understood. Yeah. So, I am make uh, training ka highlights. Bata ho, yaar. So, uh, like NDA is more focused towards academics in terms of like uh, even your graduation and all that. But the IMA, obviously, it is more towards the military training. So, uh, that was there. And uh, obviously, uh, you do all those military subjects like map reading and weapon training and things like that. That's the exposure you get over there. And then I was a para volunteer uh, while I was in IMA. So, I participated that in that. And I was in the single company. So for a short while, I was also the uh, CSM uh, in that uh, single company. And later on, of course, uh, Mehak Singh was made uh, CSM and I was made as uh, DUO, uh, that is a division under officer. So in IMA, I, I volunteered for that, you know, uh, I don't know whether you remember, we used to have that Kamath expedition, which uh, was being planned at that particular time. So every, yes, yes, fortnight, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so every fortnight, we used to climb uh, one of those... Uh, Peaks, uh, uh, you know, we used to go there. Uh, 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 there used to be clouds, and then from there we used to come to Masuri and then come down. So we used to do that. So it was good fun. Obviously, uh, I made good friends there, uh, uh, Gautam Chonek, and then I also came to know about Avasti, that para guy was uh, uh, also there. So, but we never, uh, I was never uh, selected for that comet expedition. Rambir also was there. So Rambir uh, got selected and some other got selected for that comet expedition. And then Bakshi was also there. I think he was in Kiran company. And uh, thereafter then uh, he, we lost him in, uh, in an Everest expedition, right? Uh, where uh, um, I think there two, three other also we lost uh, in that yeah. uh, Bakshi was also there. Yeah, and you uh, be Rao yeah. the our senior, then Bakshi, my course mate, yeah. current company wala direct entry. Yeah, yeah. These were the guys. So the highlights. So the highlights of IMA was that uh, uh, I wanted to join paras, but I couldn't get the paras, and uh, we did the para jumps, we did a lot of those expeditions and things like that. But I got a Mahar regiment uh, uh, from IMA, so I was quite disappointed at that time. But then I said, okay, let me, uh, you know, whatever has been given, it's been my destiny. So let me uh, go there and uh, do whatever. How long, did you, how long did you serve in Mahar Regiment? I served for two years. And um, uh, there I, uh, while I was there, initially I joined at uh, uh, this place. Um, uh, what was that? Uh, it was uh, in uh, Uttaranchal, Pratap, uh, uh, Pithoragad. I joined okay, in, okay. in Pithoragad. And uh, thereafter, uh, because obviously they found me to be one of the guinea pigs or the athletes, so I joined their athletics team and then went and participated in brigade level and then selected for the div level events and all that. But then there I overstretched myself and, uh, you know, I uh, tore my ligament, my left knee ligament uh, got uh, tore and then I was admitted in the hospital, kind of Lucknow hospital. So there a lot of uh, this thing uh, happened. So I was kind of not very happy with the way things were going and uh, how I was, uh, you know, thought to be one of the good athletes and now I'm not able to do things and all that. So I was quite disappointed. But then I tried to, uh, you know, recover from that and uh, uh, went for commandos uh, course uh, you know, while I was in Mahar Regiment. And uh, I uh, got my X-ray instructor grading over there, despite the fact that I had a ligament issue. And there I met this chap called... Uh, uh, you know, crack Sandhu of uh, 10 para. And uh, there were other officers also from para. So I interacted with them and just try to understand what they do, how they do, you know, what kind of professionalism do they have uh, uh, in the paras and things like that. So that's how, uh, after having spent two years in Mahar and uh, uh, having torn my ligament, despite that, I kind of, you know, took the plunge or leap of faith and joined, uh, volunteered for 10 para SF. While I was doing my commando course uh, at Bilgaon. 
and uh, so that was uh, i would say the turning point in my life uh, uh, and why i joined paras was uh, basically to kind of you know get to know uh, what professionalism in the army is all about because what i realized while i was in the management that a uh, lot of stuff which we were doing you know could have been done better with proper training with proper man management and thing like that so which was, i was not very very happy with it like i was uh, kind of thrown into the athletics team and to you know participate in so many events and ultimately i uh, injured my knee so we could have done it a little bit more professionally so i was uh, that was uh, one thing and obviously in the exercises what i saw how things were happening on ground many of the things were not uh, to my liking uh, uh, the way we were doing things so i thought that why not try something different and be more professional so that was my main aim of uh, kind of volunteering for paras and obviously paras also had a lot of glamour in terms of uh, you know you get a lot of those specialized courses like scuba diving free fall and thing like that and obviously you get a lot of uh, operational tasks which are uh, quite unique in nature and then uh, you are given a lot of liberty and freedom to do those things so that was uh, how i kind of gravitated towards joining the paras थोड़ा प्रोबेशन का बताओ यार एक्सपीरियंस सो इनिशियली ऑब्वियसली आई हैड डन माय कमांडोस कोर्स इन बेलगाम व्हेन आई जॉइंड टेन पैरा सो एंड आई हैड डन वेल सो पीपल हैड गुड रिस्पेक्ट फॉर मी एंड बट द काइंड ऑफ मेंटल टॉर्चर व्हिच दे पुट यू थ्रू इज क्वाइट डिफरेंट इन द सेंस दैट दे गिव यू सर्टेन टास्क एट नाइट एंड दे वांट द रिजल्ट्स इन द मॉर्निंग देन दे यू नो काइंड ऑफ मूव यू टू some place uh, uh, whether it is in the jungles or uh, mountainous terrain or deserts and this is leave you over there and uh, you are you know left on your own and obviously physically you have to be uh, very tough uh, in those things so physically i didn't have any problem despite the fact that i had um, ligament issues but i managed to you know pull through all those speed marches and thing like that i think it is more of a mental torture and the kind of things which I, you know make you go through they'll give you a book to read and uh, give a synopsis or review it in the morning and probably give a presentation in the morning so i would say mentally it was uh, quite uh, tormenting and luckily we had two officers me and another officer we were doing probation together so we had good company and we could share our thoughts uh, uh, we used to be you know made to sleep with the men eat with them and learn from them and uh, those people will provide you all they'll provide the feedback on the officers on their character and uh, you know what they do what how they do and all so uh, so you cannot uh, poodle fake over there while you are in the sf or when you are doing your probation they'll see through you within no time and you have to be honest to yourself as well as uh, professional you professionally you have to be good in terms of you know understanding uh, what kind of operations uh, are there so unless you have that uh, skill which uh, i guess uh, since i had done my yos i had done commando so i had a better advantage uh, in comparison to the other officer who had directly uh, joined uh, para sf so that helped me in uh, kind of you know uh, getting uh, selected uh, in para sf but challenges uh, i i would say when you are doing your uh, commandos in belgaum in comparison to what you are doing in the unit uh, you are you know one or two or guys who are doing probation whereas in belgaum there are 50 60 people and there are limited number of instructors here there are more instructors than the actual uh, uh, you know doing people who are doing probation so you are always in the constant watch by them and they are watching you uh, all the time and so you cannot poodle fake you have to be very clear on what you want to do and if in case you really want to join uh, para sf then you have to have that kind of uh, uh, motivation uh, to sustain uh, all kind of rigors uh, physical mental and uh, you know and then obviously you know what is going to go uh, if in case you're going in for an operation so you have to be prepared for that so you you can uh, do away with uh, i would say take less food but you have to carry your operational st- uh, things uh, along with you whether it is ammunition or your equipment so they'll kind of you know while you're sleeping they'll come and pick up your stuff and hide it somewhere then you have to search for it and you know all kinds of things uh, they'll do they'll basically make you uh, Uh, think as if uh, mentally you can uh, uh, you know you cannot sustain that if in case you are mentally not strong so the kind of pressure they put you through uh, your probationary officer was uh, shambhu sir no 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 shambhu was not my probation officer i had a, uh, another officer uh, who is no more he is uh, uh, mr uh, colonel chandola acha 
आपके तीन ऑफिसर हैं तो मेरे साथ स्टाफ कॉलेज किया था और शंभू सर मेरे एनडीए में साथ थे ओके या शंभू आई थिंक ही वाज बिफोर मी मे बी अबाउट अ ईयर और सीनियर टू मी ही इज 68 रेगुलर या या तो थोड़ा ये बताओ यार आपका यूनिक कल्चर जो है 10 पैरा एसएफ का क्या है सो so, 10 पैरा एज यू नो दिस यूनिट वाज रेज्ड इन 1967 एंड this uh, unit had uh, the you know the uh, unique uh, the singer maharaja of jaipur colonel bhavani then Brig- now brigadier bhavani singh he commanded that unit in 1971 operations and uh, we carried out uh, chachro raid uh, across pakistan and you know we we captured the, uh, those uh, that chachro area as well as uh, we carried out those raids in our jongas and we modified those jongas in terms of uh, so that they sound like uh, tanks and uh, we had the capability to sustain ourselves in the desert terrain so a lot of stuff which he did while he was uh, the ceo and obviously being a maharaja he was taking 1 rupee as a token uh, salary and uh, he had the access to the uh, uh, politician and everyone so he could get what he wanted so that is the uh, culture wherein i joined uh, so it was like a maharaja type of a culture and uh, initially uh, even i uh, you know coming from the infantry i was kind of overawed by the way things were happening over there but in some things i was not very happy the way they used to do things like drinking and uh, you know eating glasses and that stuff <laughs> so uh, that i didn't like at all because i was very very focused towards how we can in you know enhance our capability and professionalism so that was my aim to you know come and learn in fact even when i left my unit mahars i told my ceo that i am going to learn new things in the sf and i am going to come back and probably i'll you know be a value addition to your team and in fact i left all my luggage uh, the unit had moved from pithoragarh to mizoram and i left my luggage over there and uh, but then when i got selected and you know i didn't uh, i didn't have time to go back because they sent me for courses and thing like that so i was so busy with that so it took me 2 years to get some leave to come back to my uh, 18 mahar unit to take my uh, you know stuff back which had uh, already rotten rotted over there because in northeast you know how things are with the kind of humidity you have so everything had uh, got rotten over there so but that was the aim so when i joined uh, to ten that i was not very uh, i was uh, very focused towards uh, doing Uh, you know professional thing but not very happy with the other culture of drinking and thing like that and uh, but there were many who uh, actually were very professional so i kind of uh, uh, interacted with them more closely and uh, there after obviously we went to sri lanka and that was a turning point for uh, even ten para because we used to think that uh, we are all god's own army but then we realized the kind of challenges we were faced with and uh, we had to really kind of you know modify us uh, our way our drills were and we had to upgrade uh, our skills our uh, actually the weapon and equipment was also not to the, the the standards we you know expected it to be when you are actually in operation you realize that your carbines didn't work your rifles uh, obviously they were heavy and uh, didn't have uh, the capability in terms of let's say what the adversary was having in terms of ak47 and thing like that even the equipment which you were carrying Uh, was uh, you know not good enough in terms of your pouches and your uh, i would say the packs which you were carrying over there so we had to really change ourselves and modify modify ourselves so we were the first one to actually uh, land up there in sri lanka uh, amongst the special forces and all that and uh, but it was a interesting chapter i was actually i don't know uh, did we meet there in a bsw course or we did it together right bsw mein saath the yeah So I was doing my pre-course training in Nasirabad. That is the time when the unit got the orders to move to a uh, place called Sulur. Basically, we were quarantined over there for launch to Sh- in Sri Lanka. So we took a you know civil airlines flight and we reached over there. Well, you know, couple of months it was uh, we waited, we waited, but we were not launched. And finally, I went for the course BSW course, and that is the time when actually the October things the hostility started. and uh, then during the mid term break i went to the mo and i just said that i want to go back to the unit you know how the sf unit works so i said the sf unit has suffered a lot of casualties and uh, they need me uh, so i need to go back so in the mo they are very you know helpful guys so there was a para guy uh, at that time colonel leader who became a general leader so he just uh, on my uh, you know the leave certificate he signed uh, report back to the unit uh, and i reported back to the unit 
without even picking up my stuff, which was there in Mao. And so there was an officer from Paras who kind of uh, broke open the door and, you know, packed everything and uh, sent that, uh, you know, luggage uh, back to me later. So that's how it is. Like, you know, the SF guys uh, are always uh, at premium in terms of when the war starts. So, uh, you know, anytime, anywhere, whenever thing hostility starts, they will want to come back and be part of the operation. So I joined back the unit uh, in October. And that time, uh, obviously, things weren't uh, as they were. Uh, and you must have read in the newspaper so many casualties. We had the major, uh, that airborne, uh, heliborne operation, which uh, uh, went very badly and uh, we suffered uh, casualties and things like that. So, but then uh, we stayed there for two and a half, three years and uh, we kind of uh, learned the uh, hard way and uh, modified our skills, the drills. And uh, then I think uh, we came out with a lot of good uh, laurels in terms of the awards, decorations and uh, Obviously, it was more of a political decision for us to be deployed and then later on pulled back. So we can't really, uh, you know, uh, uh, decide that or we can't be choosing on that. Yeah. Culturally, so also, then para yeah. underwent a change thereafter. Yeah, 1987. I think somebody was asking a question on the this thing. It was 1987 October we got launched and. Uh, finally, in 1990, I think um, early 1990, 1991, when we came back from there. I came back early because I went for a foreign language course and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You were asking something. Uh, Man, I, I was asking okay, culturally also you underwent some changes thereafter. Sri Lanka tenure department. Yeah, absolutely. I I would say uh, just jo, jo, what training we were doing was not uh, you know fit for war. Whatever training we were doing earlier, it was more like uh, carry out all, things like that. But we never expected and uh, imagined. Uh, uh, how things are going to be there on, in Sri Lanka and uh, things like, uh, simple things like uh, how you prepare your food. You know, uh, we used to make uh, food in Dalda and it used to smell a lot, people carrying uh, pickle, things like that. So the LTT uh, guys, uh, they could smell us from far and our surprise used to get lost. So a lot of things, uh, small, small drills and skills we picked up. And what, uh, in addition to that, what we realized was that um, Though academically, people could be very good. But when it comes to operations, you require a lot of practical skills and experience, which was lacking in many cases. And uh, means uh, without uh, naming the units, we realized that uh, some of the units which had the uh, best of their officers, whether it is uh, Deltas or uh, uh, this thing, uh, you know, foreign uh, staff college and things thing like that, uh, they could just not perform. And uh, in fact, Tenpara stood out in that uh, because Tenpara never used to kind of, uh, uh, you know, talk all those big things and all that. And they never had, like within the SF uh, community, we were considered to be more, uh, you know, Dehatis, like uh, because of Rajasthani and things like that. And, but uh, we proved our metal over there and uh, we did very well. And uh, of course, Nine Para was also equally good. But uh, I, I would say in many uh, instances, we proved, uh, uh, you know, wrong in terms of how we executed some of those operations. And uh, we did suffer. We did suffer. We suffered. In fact, uh, the CEO who was supposed to take over the command of 10 para after the incumbent was to leave. So he got shot in one of the operations. So that was a major uh, setback and uh, this thing, uh, you know, prospective CEO getting shot and things like that. And uh, so that's it. I think the drills, we really uh, improved there. And uh, that time we had a very good commander, uh, General Nanavati, who was a special forces commander. So he used to be uh, kind of, you know, uh, discussing things uh, every day in the evening. We used to sit in the uh, our officer's mess and talk things, uh, what went right, what went wrong. And, uh, you know, so it was a good time. And we really uh, created that bon homie and uh, the spirit of uh, SF over there. And he also kind of acknowledged that, that how, what we do and how we do things. We had very good CEO, General Dalveer, that time Colonel Dalveer. Um, he was given yeah, yeah. So in fact, when we got stuck in that initial operation in uh, Cocoville uh, with that Halibon oper uh, uh, after that Halibon operation, so he came uh, taking three tanks and, uh, you know, he got us uh, uh, extricated from there along the railway line. So that is one of the very uh, good operations. And of course, I won't say that operationally we succeeded in what we wanted to, but at least show how the, the character of a unit is that we don't leave our men behind. 
even if they are dead, we bring each and every body. And so he ensured that each one of us comes back. And in fact, many a times, uh, you know, people ask that why we do what we do. So I say it is just the culture that, you know, when I was a troopie, I used to talk to the boys and I used to tell them, look, I'm going to be there right with you, whatever happens. And somebody has to die. It's not that uh, I have it in my control. Things will go wrong. Somebody will die. But rather than dying by not doing anything, it would be good that we actually, you know, uh, at least uh, kill our adversary or at least uh, uh, do a good operation. And then if, even if we die or if we get injured, at least it will be still, uh, you know, uh, a saving grace uh, for us as well as for your family. But I'll look, I, we will get you back. So that was a promise which used to give for every operation we used to go over there. And uh, luckily for me, uh, I was a young uh, troopie there. So we didn't lose a single man in my troop. And uh, when I was, when one of the Havalda was retiring, so I was kind of, uh, you know, emotionally moved when he touched my feet. He says that you got us out from this operation and I'm going back, uh, you know, hail and hearty to my family. I said that we all work together and it was our own duty. Uh, not that I, uh, you know, had any intention that, uh, you know, safety does come first uh, always. But uh, more than that, it is the operational task which I have to achieve. 20 to that operational task. While doing the operational task, there would be challenges, there would be risks, and we'll have to face it. I cannot promise that I would be able to keep, uh, you know, uh, ensure that 100% of you people will be safe and I'll be able to bring you back. But at least I'll give my best to ensure that nobody gets hurt. And that promise is very important when you're talking to the men. So they have confidence in you. So, so that, that's how uh, we were able to do well. And uh, boys really, uh, you know, worked very hard and did well. Dalbir sir, to our instructor the why was my tack leg me Major Dalbir, very very good ground soldier. Yeah, very very good foot soldier, and uh, obviously he was not that kind of a person who would try to uh, you know show things in a different way if they are not. So he would uh, you know paint it the same way as they are. They call the spade as a spade. So that was his good quality, and uh, he was there in the NSG before he joined uh, as a CEO in 10 para but initial stages obviously he had some ideas that this is the way we will do how things uh, you know they work and uh, but sooner or later i think the uh, the way we were operating as an infantry and uh, especially the special forces and the, the way the tasks were being given over there so we we learned very quickly though we suffered uh, initial stages here yeah. acha thoda bail down move ahead highlights of unit command thoda batao apna as ceo yeah so what happened, uh, Nehru, uh, obviously I learned from my experience the hard way. In fact, in Sri Lanka, I got injured also. Uh, we were in Malvedi Turai, where the Prabhakran belonged. And that is a place where I got shot and uh, got grenade blast injuries. So in my mind, I always thought that the skill and the capability of the unit is in terms of, you know, uh, what each individual can perform on ground. Then only the unit can uh, perform well. So I, I, I took over the command of 21 Para SF, though. I was in 10 para, but then there wasn't anyone to command 21. So they sent me to command the 21 para SF. So 21 para SF was a new uh, unit. It was converted from Marathas, 21 Marathas. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, my colonel of the regiment uh, said that uh, we need to really you know, improve the drills and the, the performance is good, but not like what an SF unit should have. So that was the kind of mandate given to me. So I joined a unit in Kashmir. And um, so obviously uh, things were not going so well in terms of like we went there for our parakram for a short while, but we didn't carry all our, uh, you know, the equipment and ammunition and everything uh, to carry out the task. So I immediately took action and, uh, you know, got the relevant things uh, going logistically as well as operationally and uh, started training my uh, uh, troopies and my team commanders. So there are a lot of resistance in the initial stages. Uh, you know, everybody said that we are very good. But then that very good was not there on ground. We were very good on paper, but we were not very good on ground. So the practical aspects, you know, when you have to score a goal, you know, you, you keep standing there at the goalpost and thinking about it that you'll score a goal. It will not happen. You, it has to come uh, your, in your muscle memory in terms of uh, doing things. So we created certain things, uh, drills, uh, training, ethos, uh, the way we, you know, do our thing. And that was all because of what my experience was in Sri Lanka. And I learned that hard way. 
and uh, it took us some time and um, um, we suffered a few casualties also some of them were accident because of a vehicle going down about 200 meters we lost about eight boys in that but then after some time uh, i never looked back because in every operation we went somehow surprisingly very surprisingly they never came back without a success and even i today also uh, sometimes you know think about it that how did it happen uh, you know basic stuff they used to do basic stuff they were good in firing and they will never open fire they will never lose surprise and intelligence uh, i was able to generate some intelligence for operations uh, prior to the operations during the operation and while the operation is going on when the firefight has taken place the contact has taken place we had certain additional equipment in terms of uh, surveillance uh, monitoring their radio communication and thing like that and um, one thing i faced the challenge initially was that the uh, the senior leadership was not ready to give us the right operational area where an sf can be deployed so that was something which i had to really struggle but i was able to convince them after almost what a year and a half uh, that was in northeast uh, when we got manipur initially we were deployed in assam but then later on we got deployed in manipur and that is a place where we really succeeded well and i had boys from uh, in my unit uh, some officers from manipur and some jawans were from manipur and then we selected uh, some lot from assam rifle we went to their regimental centers and we requested to get some good boys from there in fact uh, our you know way was that we used to ask the, their teams to come and operate with us and we'll train them and from that we used to train their ghataks and we used to pick up one or two boys from their ghatak teams so that is how we were able to get very good uh, capable boys uh, uh, from other infantry units and assam rifle units to volunteer for sf and uh, there after the unit was uh, you know absolutely on the uh, roll in terms of operations and the kind of operations we did uh, you know collaborated with the air force collaborated collaborated with the other intelligence unit brigade dev core and command unit so everybody wanted to work with us somehow they used to say that uh, uh, we want to work with 21 bar and surprisingly uh, when we are doing an operation while in operation also some of the uh, uh, you know unit young officers they used to send me a small slip of paper and wanting to tell me something that i have information for you means i said that matlab uh, <laughs> why should he be sharing information after all it is his unit but that was a kind of uh, i would say the professionalism which we were able to achieve that other than uh, you know other units uh, also acknowledge our professionalism and uh, not necessarily their uh, uh, mean commanding officers the brigade commanders and all but the youngsters they felt that if we work with the 21 sf we'll get results and uh, obviously they'll also get benefited from that so that's how it was and uh, in many operations uh, i think we got the results uh, which i can only uh, share uh, brief uh, details about it is that uh, you know the luck was in our favor and when the army commander came to my unit and he asked me hey, what do you do how do you do so i had to just say one line that universe conspired to give us success it was <laughs> you know sometimes you know like we went for an operation and uh, it was a div level operation and uh, we did have established a contact and uh, initial stages and we did get success initially and later on uh, this young officer from assam rifle sent me information saying that i have seen militants and if you could uh, come to my post so it took me about 5 6 hours and i went next day and met him and i asked him where is the info, what kind of information do you have so he said that the militants are there in this village so i said okay show me uh, okay i saw the map and i said let's climb up this uh, nearby hill and from there we will be able to do a surveillance over that uh, village so we climbed up that hill and uh, we started doing some bit of surveillance and after about 5 10 minutes i said that they cannot be there in this village because you know you have your intuition uh, when the village thermal activities are going on so i asked let's look at the other uh, you know 5 kilometers on the side of that village there were some uh, i would say isolated huts and thing like that probably they could be there so we put our uh, the surveillance devices over there and started monitoring it and within about 15 minutes we started counting the militants and uh, you know and we had real live information available and now we had to get our troops back because i had only 15 people with me and i could not have launched uh, an operation so i asked the goc uh, colonel gs and goc to get my troops back so it was a lot of uh, with hesitation and uh, uh, this thing they said okay we are it's a dev level operation i said well, look it's a dynamic situation you cannot be sitting in a place and trying to occupy the ground you have to actually see where the situation is how it is evolving 
So finally they agreed. My boys came back after two days because they had gone further ahead and they were also tired and things like that. But luckily we went for an operation there and uh, we had a, I would say, a windfall results over there. And uh, somehow that is how army commander was very impressed. And uh, sometimes when you do things uh, in the right way, I think we were lucky that day that the universe conspired to give us that success. Otherwise, we could have continued to stay in wherever we were. And had that young officer not shared that information with me, probably we wouldn't have uh, done that. So these are some of the highlights, I would say. But uh, yeah, I think in a special forces operation, you have to be very, very, you have to have a very dynamic mind. And to, you know, keep changing or evolve uh, as the situation changes. Because you and your adversary both are there to survive. So if in case you do something, which is, uh, I would say, uh, um, you know, reckless, you could lose your lives. And same is the case with your adversary. So adversary also wants to survive. So he'll also try to understand uh, what kind of uh, drills we do, how we do, so that he can ambush you. And after this operation, we had a major ambush. Uh, luckily, it wasn't on us. It, uh, they ambushed uh, infantry unit uh, Gurkhas. And they suffered a uh, huge amount of uh, you know, casualties. So those are the things which we have to be very, very careful about. That when you do a successful operation, then you have to be careful that they are going to retaliate. So you've got to be prepared with that. Manny, I don't know whether you remember or not. You know, our tenures to some extent, we had parallel tenures in the Northeast. I was commanding 23 Punjab in Yangtze. When your team of two officers, and I don't remember how many men they had come to carry out reconnaissance of that area. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. But uh, you're talking about Arunachal, right? Arunachal, I was in the young city. I'm mm. just forgetting. Major, tha, he was from Jammu. Ka tha. He was a tough chap. I, mm. I think he no more. He died somewhere. I don't know what happened. Bandral. Like, huh? Bandral. Bandral, no. Vivek uh, Bandral. Chamola? No, no, no. He was a little... No, I, I do... I do. We used to do a lot of recce in the Eastern Command in the uh, because yeah. there was only one SF unit, so we were part of the. Uh, uh, you had a lieutenant. He was a very tall guy. He was about six one. He was taller than me. And this guy was a strong chap. He would be about five nine, five ten. Uh, Jammu side ka tha, major. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Time for us to And yeah, mere, okay. you know, they were trying to poach my jawans also. Twenty three Punjab walo ko na ke tum kam ten para to me convert kara deke. अच्छा 10 पैरा के 10 पैरा के थे क्या वो वो 21 के थे ओ सॉरी 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 मैं गलत बोल रहा हूं 21 21 के जब आप तेजपुर में थे आप यूनिट ओके ओके सो आई डोंट रिकॉलेक्ट एनीवन ऑफ 6 फुट हाइट बट मे बी मैं यंगस्टर था यंगस्टर आपका यंगस्टर था हां लेफ्टिनेंट था ही वो ही प्लेड वॉलीबॉल विद अस इज अ गुड वॉलीबॉल प्लेयर ओके भारद्वाज हां भारद्वाज I am not able to remember, but it was not a major issue. It was just Rotia tha from Jammu. But just Rotia, tha. just Rotia, tha. yes. Uh, but he was not six feet. He's young. He's no, just, just Rotia was a major. Just Rotia would be about 5'9, five, 5'10. Five, uh, yeah, yeah. He's from Jammu. He yeah. But he was, there in the initial, he was there in the initial stages of my command, but then he left. He was, young he was, major, young major. He was a young major. Oh. Okay. Just Rotia, young major, was lieutenant Lambasa. Anyway. So, okay, okay. Achha, you know, command of units, so many challenges. Also. Why did you suddenly decide to leave army? So, uh, of course, uh, whatever I wanted to achieve uh, while as CEO of a special forces, I was able to achieve. And then, uh, you know, my wife was working and uh, his, she's been continuously working. And so we've had a very, very separated kind of family life. And son also needed some bit of guidance and support. Uh, and uh, she was in Mumbai. So, I kind of, uh, you know, gravitated to why not do something else? And, you know, while come after you do a command of a special forces unit, nothing else looks so, I would say, challenging in terms of uh, what you want to do with your life. So that was, I think, one aim that I, I felt that uh, while being in the army, I would not have uh, any more challenges uh, as I have already, you know, commanded a special forces unit. And second was obviously the family issues when I, you know, decided to uh, quit. Because in the last four, in those 14 years of our married life, we were together only two years. So that is a hardship which you have to go through when you are in the special forces. So, so that was these were the two reasons, yeah. So corporate life, we highlights, right? Barclays, Shackles, 
हाँ सो वेन आई लेफ्ट दी आर्मी एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम आई थॉट दैट आई विल बी एबल टू यू नो स्टार्ट ऑफ फ्रॉम स्क्रैच एंड आई डिड स्टार्ट ऑफ फ्रॉम स्क्रैच आई जॉइन एन टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनी एच सी एल एंड गॉड एन टू देयर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड यू नो सर्विस बिजनेस एंड विच वॉज एक्सपैंडिंग एंड वॉज गुड बट देन आई रियलाइज दैट इट इज नॉट सो ईजी इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो गेटिंग टू नो एवरीथिंग Uh, at this age and age was not in my favor at that time i was about 45 uh, plus and uh, so then i thought that i should be looking at something which is more uh, uh, i would say wherein i can use my uh, uh, skill set of the army also and a uh, certain degree of uh, i would say risk management uh, which is already what you were doing in the army you were more into the Uh, physical risk, but here there are other kind of risk, operational risk, and other things which are there. So then I gravitated from initially from a you know, technology company to a operational risk uh, management uh, roles, and uh, then you do a lot of uh, stuff while you're working with certain uh, corporates, and you uh, you know get to know what their challenges are, and uh, that is how I kind of got picked up uh, by Bank Barclays. They needed somebody to uh, support them. in mumbai initially they got me in the bank and then the role got expanded then i kind of was looking after their uh, the back office operational risk management role also then investigation and vigilance and thing like that they kept falling in my lap so i think uh, what i learned was that whatever you have learned in your career yeah, in your adventure army, activities mein kaise aa gaye wapas abhi so uh, while you are in uh, corporate life you know how the the time is spent most of the time you are on a laptop and you are working in the office so i realized that it is not very healthy so i had to get back to at least be you know physically fit enough so that i can have a healthy life so i started uh, initially with the short runs and thing like that then some of the people within the uh, corporate uh, like in barclays were going for this adventure activity and uh, that is how i also thought why not let's try doing this so they had done this uh, previously uh, uh, you know there is a but a famous thing called marathon the sabelis which happens uh, in africa and uh, so in the sahara desert so which is supposed to be considered very very tough in terms of uh, you know running about 250 kilometers in desert and then you have limited water that is a major challenge that you do not have enough water uh, they give you i think 2 liters per day uh, water and you have to survive with that you have to carry your everything food and everything so uh, then they said that there is another race which is uh, racing the planet which is not uh, as tough as uh, marathon the sapless but uh, equally challenging because you have to still do 250 kilometers and uh, but then water is uh, given uh, you know they, you will get plenty of water whatever how much you want so that was the reason i then okay let's try this racing the planet uh, that gobi uh, mongolia uh, in mongolia where uh, do about 250 kilometers in five days stage race so that is how i, how I joined that uh, so uh, initially even i was not very sure that whether i will be able to do it or not because you know it looks quite uh, unsurmountable in terms of the distance 250 kilometers you are going in deserts you are climbing some mountains you are going to cross some uh, i would say grassland and uh, uh, you know crossing water bodies and thing like that so it's a stage race every day you have to do almost about 38 40 kilometers and one day you have to do a long uh, it's called the long day in in terms of uh, 80 90 kilometers so every day they have a cut off time certain cut off time but they're very easy and flexible so i took overall about 43 hours means uh, in the overall race i took about 43 hours but it was reasonably okay the guy who would have come first he would have taken about 25 to 30 hours and okay. but those guys are extremely fit means i was uh, what in the year of 2018 i was about uh, 57 so it was age was not in my favor and the youngster like 24 years 25 years were competing 30 years were competing so they are super fit uh, they can run the race of 250 km whereas we cannot run throughout we have to walk run walk run walk run thing like that and then the uh, other thing is that you are carrying the entire equipment on your back you have a list of about 35 items in which uh, which includes your uh, food which includes your medicaid which includes your mattress which includes your sleeping bag your gloves your you know all kind because it gets very cold at night right in mongolia it's almost like this place like uh, ladakh and uh, so uh, minus uh, 15 uh, 20 degrees at night and during day time it is plus 20 25 degrees uh, sometimes going up to 30 degrees so it's a hell of a kind of a this thing uh, uh, race 
but it is good fun because there are very limited number of people about uh, i think we had about 250 odd people and uh, 80% of the those people they did complete the race and uh, the timings are pretty reasonable if you are a good runner and a reasonably fit guy and you don't suffer any injuries i think uh, if you manage your food well your uh, medical because you will get blisters right you will have uh, sprains you will have to take pay, painkillers and thing like that so in all that uh, you have to be prepared with it so that's how it was and then after that obviously i've been doing some bit of uh, running and marathons and participating in these uh, ironman events i've not done my ironman but i am quite keen to do that recently of course now i have come to this place ladakh and trying to run on a pangong so lake so initially i thought it will be easy but uh, now looking at the kind of challenges you see over here the temperature is again minus 22 degrees uh, right now uh, of course uh, we are uh, inside a nicely cozy place but once you go outside it is absolutely a different world altogether it means if you keep your ear open they'll just uh, freeze so you have to keep yourself covered completely so those are things uh, but it gives you good excitement and uh, whenever you get out of your comfort zone you know you learn new things so i always say that uh, at the periphery is a learning means if in case you remain in your confined what you are doing daily in your normal routine activities you will never get to learn anything new so you have to get out of your comfort zone and actually see where uh, you know uh, you are being tested for your endurance for your mental capability for anything which you want to do or achieve in your life that is how you will learn new things i remember you were motivating me also to join up with some of this you know go feed and all that maine kaha bhai mera tennis hi kaafi theek hai i'll carry on with that now good so in that you know you have to spend a lot of time in preparing for it yeah so, yeah like yeah. when you sign up for something and then you start preparing for it that's yeah, where the yeah. learning takes place uh-huh. and the learning curve is also very tough या अपना चतुर्वेदी ने अल्ट्रा मैराथन कराया था व्हेन ही वाज हेडिंग ना अपना ये क्या कहते हैं एनएससी 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 ही वाज हेडिंग तो ही डिड द 60 किलोमीटर अल्ट्रा मैराथन तो मेरे को कह रहा था तू आगे दौड़ दे मैंने कहा भाई मैं इट विल टेक मी एटली 6 मंथ्स टू प्रिपेयर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू रन जस्ट लाइक दैट नो आई नॉट वेरी गिव इट अ गो वेरी वेल तो ये चलता रहता है थोड़ा एडवाइस दो यार यंगस्टर्स के लिए मेडी so i uh, see what i feel is that whatever is your passion first try to identify that passion of yours and then make it as your career goal not means many a times we don't know about our passion so that becomes a bit of a challenge so if in case you can identify what is your passion and you can make it as your career goal then your life will be very very clear but if you are not sure of yourself and you want to try out new things you must try out new things but whatever you want to try out you should be focused towards it let's say talk about joining nda so you should have a plan if i have to join nda by so and so year or so and so date and what all i do need to do for that so means you need to keep kind of keep you know a uh, uh, central focus to your aim is to join nda and you have to make concentric circles around that and have a reasonable degree of let's say one year two years three years plan that what all i need to do to achieve that if that is very clear then you know wo kehte hai na ke mushkil kuch bhi nahi hai sirf jaan lene ki hai der darya to kya hai aag mein bhi kood pade sirf thaan lene ki der hai so you have to firstly find your aim or what you want to achieve once you have that then you will get enough information to achieve your goals so like when i went for my 250 km ultra so i was also clueless what will i be doing what will i be eating what how much weight i will be carrying on my back and will i be able to because you have to if you increase your food intake your load will also increase right so you have to balance it out and you have to have 2000 at least minimum calories eaten because that is mandatory you can take 2500 also you can take 3000 also but then it will increase your weight also so you have to plan for it then to do 250 km in 5 days 6 days time every day you have to run 50 km you have to practice that accordingly so if you have to practice with the load with the food so all those things you know that's how you will get your uh, whatever you want to achieve so you got to have a aim got to have a very very clear goal what you want to achieve and then make plan around it Okay, what all I need to do before I achieve that? 
you will get enough of information from nowadays. Uh, I think Google is a master of that, but you need to find someone who is the master in that or somebody who has gone through it to provide you the genuine information. Otherwise, they, you, you know, you could get distracted with a lot of the stuff which you see in the movies and things like that. So that is the first thing I would say. And the second thing I would say is that, uh, you know, whatever you do in life, whether it is in private sector or whether you do in the army, or the, there will be challenges, there will be hardships. So be, be ready, be ready with that. Don't shy away from that. That if in case you have a difficult uh, situation, that you should, uh, you know, shy away from that and uh, go. Of course, uh, uh, while you're in the special forces, those challenges will be much more and uh, you will have higher risk, but then you will be training yourself uh, to that. So obviously you will be able to overcome those challenges. Maddy, that is all I had to, you know, converse with you. So Maddy, thanks a lot. Please take care. Good luck for your uh, half marathon. Do well and keep in touch. And thanks a lot on behalf of uh, all uh, students and Yogita of Nopins Academy. Take care, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And wish you all the best uh, and all of you to succeed in whatever, uh, uh, I would say, challenges you pursue. Mushkil kuch bhi nahi hai, sirf jaan lene ki deir hai. Dariya to kya hai, aag mein kut par hai, sirf thaan lene ki deir hai. Hum jab ye kehte hai na ke, commandos jo special forces ke hum hote hai, kheti hai ki falsafe ki kabhi pakti nahi. सुनते हैं सबकी ये क्या वो क्या हिम्मत है हमारी कि कभी थकती नहीं सांस है लेकिन एक सांस की भी तकलीफ नहीं मतलब जान है हमें अपनी जान की परवाह नहीं सांस है लेकिन हम सांस की भी परवाह नहीं करते बट व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यू हियर इज दैट के देयर आर लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज यू वांट टू जॉइन द आर्म फोर्सेस सो यू शुड बी प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर दैट एंड फेस द चैलेंजेस एज दे कम एंड डोंट बी अफ्रेड डोंट बी अफ्रेड take challenges as they come and prepare your mind i think that is more important preparing your mind mind will always try to take you to the comfortable side so you have to prepare your mind to take the toughest decisions toughest choices in life that is how you will become a complete person and you will know about your own capabilities all right thanks a lot all the best